pity Flanagan such a restless sleeper. What does that riding up there mean, mate? Forty men or eight horses. French certainly care about their horses, eh? <laughs> by Tom Collins. That's one of my favourite books. You one of the fair dinkums? Well, you know, anybody who joined up after the mess in Gallipoli had to be fair dinkum. Oh, I see. Rolly Collins. Wilhelm Schmidt. Pleased to meet you. Jeez, did you hear that? We got a bloody hun here. Ha! Wilhelm Schmidt. How'd you been? A bloke travels 12,000 miles to fight the bludgers and there's one right here with us. Schmidt the spy. <laughs> Come on, this bloke's a fair dinkum, a volunteer like every one of us. Ah, oh, don't give me that, he's getting a train ride home. Hey, get off me bloody hands, you mugs! Why don't you stand up and say that, soldier? Okay, okay, don't get off your bike. It was only having a bit of fun, that's all. Well, keep your mouth shut then, eh? Okay. What's your name? Dinny Gord. Dingo, it suit him better. Welcome aboard, mate. Name's Flanagan. Pleased to meet you. A good man. Is he one of the originals? Yeah. Well, not really. He joined us as a reinforcement. How many originals are there? Only six out of 40. Martin Barrington, the corporal? Well, he should be an officer, but he won't. I don't know why. Bill Harris? He's a poem and a bit of a mystery. <laughs> and that's Pat Cleary. He's bulletproof. How do you mean? Well, he's got so many wads of money on him, it's like armor. Oh, and there's Sergeant MacArthur and Mr. Armstrong, except they're travelling first class. And there's me. You were wounded twice, Riley? Oh, most of us got in the way of something. <laughs> Wilhelm, with your name and all. Well, what I mean is... You must have thought hard about joining up. My father, who brought us out from Germany, he always taught us that freedom has its price. Well, I tell you what, this looks like a fine country to be fighting for. Sure beats Egypt. Oh, it's a beautiful country. Wally. Well, Puddin, if you got to go, you got to go, mate. <laughs> Wilhelm? We can't keep calling you Wilhelm. Yeah, it's the same name as the Kaiser. That's what we'll call him, Kaiser. Anyway. <laughs> Bayonet, 18 inches of cold steel. That would have drawn every sniper on Gallipoli. Bayonet, weapon of the assault. of the bayonet must be inculcated through all ranks so they go forward with aggressive determination. Sergeant, put on the killing face. Hang on! <laughs> Son the crows, that's the face that killed his mother-in-law. <laughs> One more remark like that and you're up on the charge. That man! Stand out here by the bayonet, dummy, where I can keep an eye on you.
We've been warned about you Australians. Absolutely no discipline. Well, let me tell you, you're not fighting the Turk now. This isn't the Bashi Bazooks. This is a real war against a first-class enemy. But the Hun can't stand cold steel. Sergeant, the final demonstration. Hang on! Stand easy. Been at the bayonet demonstration, have you? Might have been useful at Waterloo. Up the line, they mostly get used for opening jam tins. Let's have a look at the real queen of the modern battlefield. Number one, load. Number two, load. Number one, ready, sir. Number one, fire. gentlemen, is why there's a continuous trench from the North Sea to the Swiss border. As long as the machine gun's intact, neither side can cross no man's land. Our enemy, the German army, is extremely skillful in their use of it. Their gunners are hand-picked, and they use them like this. Entire front is crisscrossed like that. What's the answer then, sir? Guns, bombs, bravery, perhaps. There isn't a real answer. Not yet. Nice quiet sector here, Mr. Armstrong. Not sure of guns here, Sarge. Breeze. Not the usual fireworks display. Look like this in the brochure. No, I play footy on the ground like this one. Very good for the small men. Yeah, but your big man's buggered in the wet. Move forward. To the nursery sector, Mr. Armstrong. After you lads are settled in, the brass hats have doubtless find a job for you. See you later, chum. Barrington, move some of your men into the next bay. Bill, Riley, Pat, Upton, Louie, follow me. How are we going to go in this? I don't know. Not a gang of Abduls, Flanagan. Bloody German army out there. I don't see how they can be any better than old Johnny Turk. Of course they bloody are. This line hasn't advanced in a year and a half. Armies from all over the world against them, they're still there. How the hell are we going to ship them? Come and have a brew.
Mrs. Baker. Mrs. Baker. May I sit down? I hope you don't mind my intruding like this. It's just that no one at Talangarook has seen much of you these last few months. I thought perhaps thought you, you could play the Lady Bountiful. <sighs> Mrs. Baker, that's not at all. I've had all the connection I want with the Barringtons. First I lose my husband with them, and then my boy. That's the most horrible thing I've ever heard. You're Martin. He was there when Dick was killed. You disgraceful woman. You know Martin would have done anything for Dick. Anything. And where do you think Martin is now? In some safe place behind the light? No. Oh, look, look stay, please. I know what it feels like. Open against hope. Put the kettle on. Actually, I came to ask a favour. Of me? Yes. You see, with all the men at war and some of the girls working in munitions, we're desperately short of help at the house. I, I was wondering oh, if you wouldn't want to live out there no more. Oh, no, that wouldn't be necessary. Oh. Well, would um, Mondays to Fridays be OK? I'm, uh, I'm going to enjoy this cup of tea. <laughs> French. Cleary, me old mate, I'm flat broke. Well, you're always flat broke, aren't you, Dingo? That's ten francs, now all you got to do is find another thirty. Now where will I steal that, mate? You'll manage. Fifteen francs. Bill. Shylock. Shylock? Just a hard working bookmaker, mate. Anyway, Shylock's ours interesting. He's right, Bill. Is he, Putin? And who was Shylock? Like Pat told me about. Officer material, Pat? Born leader of men, Bill. Morrissey! Oh, didn't see you there, Pat. Bad light, was it, eh? Yeah. yeah. 35 francs. Better luck next time. Hey, Bill. Got a minute, mate? Listen, uh... Got a bit of a job on later tonight. I wonder if you could give me a hand. Oh, well, I would if I could, but I'm on a carrying party at 0300, carrying two tons of barbed wire, ammunition, duck boards, and orders of the bleeding day up into the line. Listen, uh, I'll give you a hand with that if you give me a hand with my uh, little job. Ah, uh, wouldn't be uh, against King's regulations, would Ah, oh, heaven forbid. No, special orders from General Haig, mate. Uh, could shorten the war by months. Matter of fact, the High Command specifically requested that I have at least one pom on the job. In that case, Puddin, Upton! Thanks for the bloody company. There you go, boys. Have one on me. <laughs> so there, absolute vigilance, do you hear? This consignment of whiskey is for general headquarters. Every case must be accounted for. Particularly as there are Australians in the area. Carry on, Corporal. Sir, good as done, sir. Right, lads, move back. Prepare to begin. Stop. Look, there's one of them. Arrest him. Hang on, fair go. We were ordered here to pick up the Padre's altar wine. A likely story. 
He's right, sir. It's all in order. Well, there's no wine here, so clear off. Clear off? If there's no service tomorrow, there's going to be all to pay. The padre... Out! On get out! Well, we were going to be all the boys. Go! It's our first mass. Carry on, Corporal. Valley disgrace. Do up that top button. What unit are you from? You horrible wee money. How dare you speak to an officer without permission? Do a third light rail company, sir, but you cannot pick and choose these days. Absolutely right. With your permission, sir. I'll post these two at the door of the rail, and I myself with Jones there will take post at the lorry. To personally count every item in. Detail move! Stay here now. Ready, and I want to hear the count loudly. Thirty-two! Twenty-three! Come on! Seventeen! Twenty-five! Eighteen! Twenty-six! Nineteen! Twenty-seven! Sixty-two! Twenty-eight! Seventy! Sixty-three! Seventy-one! Sixty-four! Seventy-two! Sixty-five, fifteen, hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy, one hundred and one, hundred and eighteen, one hundred and two, hundred and nineteen, one hundred and four, hundred and twenty, come, one hundred and five, hundred and twenty-one, hundred and twenty-two, one hundred and six. Oh, come on, you slackers. There's another 25 to come off yet. I beg your pardon, sir, but there's only two left. What? We've been robbed. Hey, sir, there's the man responsible. I'll nab him. Security to that one. Follow me. Come back, up, lads. Come back. You're under that One, two, three... Four. Five. Uh, thank you, Corporal. Sir. Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Yes. Twenty-two exactly. My bell, France. That'll do me. Pardon? France. More opportunities here for an enterprising businessman such as myself. Found Gallipoli a bit restricting that way. You do not expect me to keep this loot here. Yeah. Loot? Oh, no, we're just... Mining it for General Haig. See, it's got his name on the bottle. Huh. Oh, you say? Boo! Oh, it was this for a while, anyway. Anyway, you're going to have to uh, mind it until we get the marketing operation underway. No. Why should I have the risk? Because half of it's yours. Why you do this? Oh, I don't know. Can't help myself. Generosity runs in the family. Besides, it'll mark the beginning of our uh, partnership. Partnership? There's a lot more stuff like this out there just waiting to fall off the back of a truck. Oh, oh thank you, General! No worries. All present, Sergeant? Sir. Here, all there. Dead-eyed Dick, Mexican sweet and sandbags. Shut up, Cleary. 
Right, I'll run through the details of this trench raid one last time. But firstly, I want to say the brigade staff are terribly keen about this stunt. Hmm. Maybe they should do it instead. Yeah. So all eyes will be on our performance. I want every man to give of his best. Our aim is to gather information on the German units opposite us. Ideally, we would like a prisoner. If not, documents or unit identifications. The snatch party will be led by me. Corporal Barrington will be second in command. The covering party will be in the command of Sergeant McCarver. I want you in and out of those trenches in five minutes. The box barrage will begin at 0300 hours. Any questions? Now it's time to move. Good luck. Right. Oh, the camp down there. Go down. Camp down, break back. That's a good idea, Upton. Sing. Let them know we're coming. Don't fiddle with that revolver, pudding. Uh, a trench raid. Is that a staff name for keeping the troops on their toes, huh? Well, I have to put something in the communiques. Martin, when are you going to apply for a commission? You sound like my father. <laughs> well, you know you should. Oh, no, I'm happy here with my mates. Mates can be one burden too many in this war. <clears throat> How's the time, sir? It's time. It was a harsh introduction to the way things were done on the Western Front. None of us were happy about it, but nobody said anything. Well, we'd learnt that the frontline soldier didn't get much say in his fate. Mr Armstrong was outed by a drop shot before it even began. Harry? Trench raids were hated by everybody. Carver! At worst, they caused casualties, and at best, it goaded old Fritz into a bloody retaliation. All for the dubious advantage of identifying some German unit that might not even be there next week. This one was attended by the usual confusion. Even with all the chaos, thanks to Puddin, we did manage to get a prisoner. Pat, well, he was pleased to pick up his first valuable souvenirs. Jackpot. Where are the others? Down further. Get out, quick. How's Morrissey? Don't know, mate. Come on, man! I don't remember seeing Sergeant MacArthur in the enemy trenches. But then it was all like a blur. Come on, move it! Martin and Flanagan seemed to know more than they were saying. And anyway, we were just glad to survive another trench raid. Besides, everyone has his bad days now and again. These from young Barrington. Magnificent. Elf bells. Congratulations, Armstrong. A prisoner, too. Well, don't thank me, Captain. I was knocked out by a drop short. Sergeant MacArthur, he took over. Then carried me out under fire. Tremendous. You wait till the Colonel hears about this. Stand fast. As you will, lad. I have just had word from Brigade. Our raid was one of the most successful and fruitful operations of its type they've seen. Jesus. What were the others like then? <laughs> You've all acquitted yourself with very great distinction. And I am very proud to be able to serve with you. In particular, I'd like to single out Sergeant MacArthur. 
for his initiative in taking command. And for also saving my life. He has been awarded the military medal. Well, drinks are on the sergeant. Good fall, Mac. It's good rough shooting country around here. The king could be interested. What's in the diary today, Kiko? Oh, there's that long cable from Marshal Joffre asking for details of the Somme offensive. He wants an early start. Tiresome, man. When we no longer have to pull chestnuts out of the fire for the frogs, perhaps we can fight on ground of our own choosing. Ypres, next year. Anything else? A uh, Mr. Murdoch this afternoon. Who's he again? An Australian newspaper man. He's An some... Australian and a newspaper man. That's doubly unfortunate. He's some sort of informal representative of the Australian Prime Minister. I really don't need to be reminded that the Australians are in France. There have already been reports of theft, disorder in the back areas of South Africa all over again. South Africa? Yes, the colonial hooligans. We're going to pack them off home then. And did you, sir? They were useful against the Boer commanders. Same sort of ragamuffin mentality. We shot a couple, as I remember. Yes, so we did. Probably have to do the same again. I'm afraid not, sir. After that affair, the Australians abolished the death penalty in their army. The devil they did. Well, we'll have to change that. Make a note that I raise the matter with this Murdoch fellow. Right, sir. If not, Kigel, we must blood him as soon as possible. Some should be ideal. Quieten him down. Oh, une bouteille l'amoré chantonie. C'est une bonne bouteille, monsieur. Know it all, don't you? Oh, not quite all. Oh, just showing off in front of an ignorant country girl. <laughs> I like showing off in front of you. I always have. Dick and I used to laugh about that all the time. Oh, remember the time you fell out of the red gum? <laughs> just because I said you couldn't reach the top. Yeah, I did reach the top, though. <laughs> Julfie. To the manor born. Ah, who's he? Just a bloke I know. Doesn't speak French as well as you do, but he is a captain. at all. Just that it's a, a pleasure to have lunch with you like this. What's one, mademoiselle? Mademoiselle? <laughs> Notice there's not many blokes around. It's the war, mate, the war. Well, all the more shearless for us, eh? Hey, a couple look at this. You two men, stand fast there. Don't you salute in your army? Not a lot. Well, we used to, but we're trying to give it up. Mmm, that was lovely, thanks. My pleasure, my dear. <laughs> You've got some company. The lads. Uh, friends over there. Australian soldier. Yeah. Ladies? Merci bien, monsieur. Good day. Well, this is a wonderful surprise, boys. Good day. What do you want? I want a beer. I told you'd be glad to see us, Pat. Yeah, of course he's glad to see us. 
Hey, you ought to see it outside. It's like a circus. All these palms running up and down, saluting the officers. Well, if you ask me, it's a good idea. Who's your friend, Marty? Oh, I'm sorry. This is Lieutenant Kate Baker. This is Privates Cleary. Hello. Hello. Pleased to meet you, sister. If all officers look like you, I wouldn't mind saluting one bit. No. What about this froggy grog? What do you reckon, Pat? Needs another sugar. <laughs> I better go. I'm on duty soon. I will be back. No, no, no. We all will, won't we, Pat? Uh, yeah. If you do me the honour, miss. Thank you, Private Flanagan. You're a real gentleman. <laughs> leave a big tip, mate. I always leave a big tip. Thank you, Garth. Merci bien, monsieur. Soyez le bienvenu. Mr. Murdoch, sir, from Australia. Good afternoon, General. Hey, Mr. Murdoch. I wondered where I'd heard your name. You were the man mixed up in that Gallipoli report. I thought it my duty to forward responsible opinions, General. Mm. Perhaps journalism has its uses. It put an end to that abominable sideshow. War must be fought here in France. This is where the German army must be brought to battle and bled white. And we need every man to do it. And not be sidetracked by politicians and strategic amateurs. I agree, General. I trust this interview is not going to result in a newspaper article. No, sir. My Prime Minister asked me to call and express his admiration and best wishes in the onerous responsibilities you have before you. Thank you for me. Anything else? He did ask me to um, raise with you the possibility of all five Australian divisions being grouped together under their own command, uh, like the Canadians. Out of the question. I will not have my hands tied as to where I can dispose them. It is a matter which both the Prime Minister and the Australian public feel very keenly about. But I remind you, Mr. Murdoch, that you are a small country, and your army is less than 10% of the British forces in France. A not insignificant force, I hope. We shall see. They have as yet to prove themselves against a first-class enemy. Meanwhile, it grieves me to say they are creating legal and disciplinary problems out of all proportion to their numbers. Well, perhaps under their own command. Uh, furthermore, I'd like you to convey to your Prime Minister in the strongest terms the urgent need to reintroduce the death penalty. The Australian people would never again hand the power of life and death to a British court martial. The maintenance of discipline must take precedence over national feeding. Agreed, if that's what's at stake. But our men are all volunteers, the kind more easily led than driven. A dubious distinction. I don't see how volunteerism can replace the normal wastage, let alone losses in a major battle. Normal wastage. About 5,000 a day across the whole front. However, this trench deadlock may soon be a thing of the past. I am preparing the greatest blow of this war. I have put 20 British divisions against the German line, and God willing, we will break through and set the cavalry loose. It may soon be over. So when are we moving out? Tomorrow. Do we know where yet? The song. And it really is the big push. Sounds like it. You know, they've got more artillery down there than anyone's ever seen. Yeah, all they need now is someone who knows how to aim it. <laughs> At least it's part of the plan. Who wants to drink? I'll drink with you, Kaiser. Oh, no thanks, mate, but I'll get you. You know, I should give this thing back. Blokes all know what happened. 
I wouldn't let one bad night worry you. Might have the wrong date. It's got the right name. I'm off. Go and have a drink with the boys. I must be going to bed. Bonsoir, bonsoir. Bonsoir, Uncle Pat. She's got her eye on you, mate. No, ever since we got here, mate, she's been after you. Ask Bill. Yeah, she's quite taken with you. She's always looking at you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I reckon you're in there, mate. But it's a one-man mission. And the only danger's gonna come from enemy artillery. But I'll keep her occupied on another front. Oh, thanks, mate. Uh, Madame, uh, Are we? excuse me, uh, one more bottle for the boys. Uh, Are we? Something special. Ah, so you want something a little different, huh? We, oui, we. Oui. I fight for you, eh? In there, mate. You're a neighbour of the Bakers, aren't you? Fly the flag, my son. I will, Bill. Ah, Whisky, you want? Ah, it's very expensive. Ah, oui. Give me two. Ah, oui. Uh, one more. Ah, oui. Mm -hmm. Monsieur Cleary. Uh, oh. Sorry. I'll take a few of this. I wouldn't miss this, but it's got a terrible thing to do to a black. We go back now. When we started our march south to the Somme, everyone was in high spirits. We'd all been told that we were going to join the great battle that was going to win the war. Even the old hands, who might have reason to know better, were caught up in the mood. We'd heard the guns a long way off. Well, they'd been going non-stop for three weeks, and we were pretty sure that old Fritz must be really knocked about by now. The village they wanted us to take couldn't be much of a problem, sure. That was our last day of innocence.
can't stay here. We'd be better out there, running along the top. So we'll be slaughtered if we stay here. Everyone, out along the top. Move out of the top. Okay. Hold on. Bloody hell are we? Who knows? This is a jump off treat? When I find out, I'll tell you. This is the battle that's gonna win the bloody war. Well, back of this, mate. I'm gonna take a look around. Runner coming in! <clears throat> Any new orders? I'm looking for the 4th Battalion. They're down that way somewhere, I think. Yes, sir. We're taking casualties. Just sitting here, Mr. Armstrong. There's another man buried here. I said we're taking casualties. If we stay here, you won't have a platoon left in an hour. Sergeant, I am not about to go stumbling around out there until I get clear orders from battalion. Now get back to your post. Ah, oh, Max, my boy. Still delving amongst the dusty tomes, I see. It's my job, father. So it is. So it is. But have you read what's happening outside these walls? These are stirring times, Max. Great deeds to perform, accolades to be won, reputations can be earned which will carry a man far in the post-war world. Ah, wish to God I was young enough to be with the brave men at the front. I thought you were offered a post in France. Yes, well, <coughs> it was decided at cabinet level that my value here recruiting was to take first priority recruiting fine young men like yourself. Are you saying that I should join up, Father? I'm merely suggesting the advantages which might accrue to yourself and your family to be part of this great crusade before it is too late. We Earnshaws have a reputation to maintain. <laughs> I've thought about it, Father, but honestly, I just get in the way. Oh, <laughs> come, come, Max. Over modesty was always an Earnshaw family fault. I was never any good at sport at school, and I get lost more than 100 yards from where the street lights end. I can't see myself being a soldier. A soldier? Who said anything about you being a soldier? I'm talking about you being an officer. Think, think what it would look like. Earnshaw, father and son for the war efforts. I, I won't think about it, father. You won't regret it. You'll be serving the mother country and Australia. They'll both be grateful, believe me. Ah, I can see it now. You'll get there after the Please. victory on the Somme, just in time for the triumphal march to the Rhine. What, what? Sir, I came across a dead runner. The way I read it, I read this still about 200 yards from the jump off point. Platoon will follow me to the extended line. Move! Wait. They're Germans. Hold it, boy. Hold it, boy, then. Where are he? What the hell are you jokers doing here? Well, advancing through Posse yes. What the hell are you doing? Just trying to find the village. <sighs> I think the village is that pile of rubble up there. Mind if I check it on your maps? Well, you don't have a map. It's bloody lovely, isn't it? Neither do we. This is getting us nowhere, sir. Now, if we can't sort it out, we'll have to find Company HQ. But come on, sir. I mean, the men can hold their positions. Right. Men! Just hold your positions! Sergeant, you put your men up on the edge of the village, huh? Right. Come on, Harry, let's go. But come on, Harry! Look, don't take this out on me, Martin. 
No officer can function with orders like these. Hello. Hello. Blame it, you useless. The cut every line. Sparks, go and check it. What do you want, Armstrong? Sir, I have no way of knowing my jump off point, nor where I'm supposed to be going. You were told to advance as far as you can. So bloody vague, it's dangerous. Yeah, well, you're bloody wrong, but that's all I've got to go on. Have you seen any enemy? I know they're probably as disorganised as we are. Can I see your map, sir? Map? <laughs> I haven't got any bloody map. This is a hell of a way to run a war. Hell, the biggest barrage of the war, and it's fallen on all the wrong bloody places. <sighs> we could push Fritz to Berlin if we had one ounce of generalship. <sighs> Armstrong. Round of all men you can and occupy the churchyard of Posse Airs. I'll try and sort out this mess. Yes, sir. Uh, no live Germans for at least a hundred yards out there, Sarge, but uh, lots of them dug in after that. What the hell are you doing wandering about? Troll. Troll? You should be helping to dig in. It's okay, Sarge. We paid Putin to dig twice as hard to make up for it. I did too, Sarge. And I am. Make any sense out of this? What does it matter? Bloody oath it does, mate. If I'm gonna get knocked here, I'd go happy if I knew what the hell I was doing. Hey, do you really think somebody thought all this up? Return will capture the remainder of the village. What bloody village? We will advance at first light. Pass the word.
losing our flank. Force in home. The German bombers have gotten blocked. Louis, machine gun on the right. Gotta get around behind them. Now, let's go. Check that end of the trench. Looks like we're stuck here. The Germans have got a beat on us every time we stick up our bloody heads. Corporal, we'll take a party of five men and bomb back down the trench behind the enemy. Your objective is to assist the 4th Battalion to bring up the flank. Sir? Martin, grab all those German bombs. Flanagan! Kaiser, Murray, grab those German bombs for me. I'm with you, Martin. Please stay here and cover us. Corporal! It gets too hot to play out. Yes, sir. It's the ranch job. The enemy on the left holding up the whole sector. Send a party around behind them. Already done, sir. The men are on the way. Man. Got him. Let's go. Bannigan, cover front. Puddin, cover rear. Come to Bavaria. Germans, lots of them. Back in the next bay. Come put. Bomb block here! Put! They can't touch us. If I can make it to that machine gun post I just knocked out, I should be able to drop bombs right on it. Don't be stupid, mate. There's bloody lead flying in all directions up there. Fritz doesn't get hey, you. What choice have we sake. got? We've got to get up over the top. 
All right, you're the boss. Yeah. Hood, give us a leg up. In. See anything blue? Breaking. Between drinking holes up here. There you go, Pud, you deserve it. Oh, jeez. <sighs> Barrington! Hey! Come on, you buggers! This is no time for a booze up yet! We got Fritz on the run! Just 200 yards to the objective! Come on! Good. More stirring deeds what won the Empire. Dingo! Bottle! Let them be, Sarge. Harris and I will stand sentry, sir. The boys have earned a break. thing by Kate. At least I, I would if I could tie her down. <laughs> it's 
a little bit academic, though, mate. You can't get out of this alive. in the way of our fine young men. Temptation? Strong drink is an evil thing. It destroys homes and families. You wowsers give me the willies. Who are we sending all this stuff to? A bunch of fighting men or a back of lily-livered bloody sissies? Ladies, ladies, please. Henrich. Well, she was putting alcohol in the billies for the boys. Look, I've been told you both have boys in the same battalion. Do try and be friends. Did have. I'm so sorry. Biker. Dick Biker. Raleigh said Dick Baker was the bravest man in the eighth. He always used to mention him in his letters from Gallipoli. Dick wasn't one for pen and paper. Look, I've got all Rolly's letters at home. We could go back after and you could read them. No. Well, you, you could read them to me. He was a little bugger at times. <laughs> Come to that, he was a big bugger too. <laughs> Billy's packed. Sorry, I was a bit snappy. Just that we used to have a good time with a few drinks. But you had something different. Your husband. Anyway, I'm glad Raleigh doesn't touch the stuff. Right, take it easy. Carrying party, sir. What's left of us? Christmas 
pavement and supply lines. We're losing hundreds. It's safe for here. Soon we'll move to the edge of the orchard now. Move to the edge of the orchard! Now! Come on, Rolly. Come on, you're okay. Let's go. Come on! Hurry! Good evening, Mr. Murdoch. Please sit down. It was very good of you to see me, Sir Douglas. Now that Australian troops are committed, my Prime Minister would appreciate some account of their progress. <clears throat> As you are aware, we renewed the attack three days ago. In the three weeks since battle was joined, there has been step-by-step -step progress across a wide front. However, in the last few days, the focal point of operations has concentrated on the vital high ground here, the heights of Thierval and Pozières. The 1st Australian Division has been attacking for three days in the Pozier sector. And their progress? Good. The Australian Division is the only formation to achieve all of its objectives. Surprisingly good in the circumstances. General Haig is referring to the fact that the Germans also consider this vital ground. They are concentrating their reserves and all their army group artillery. All their artillery. Hey, there's our relief. Question, Sir Douglas. From the map, the Pozier's position looks less than a mile wide. The concentration of artillery in that small space must be very heavy indeed. Uh, perhaps the heaviest of the war. And our casualties must inevitably reflect this. These, I notice, are yesterday's positions. Have you any information as to our latest progress? Well, the whole area, of course, is covered by dust and smoke. All the telephones are cut and our airmen can see nothing. Douglas, as you know, my Prime Minister is determined to commit Australian manpower and resources to see this thing through to the end. However, he will ask me, I'm sure, 
whether these gains of a few hundred yards are worth the blood expended on them. Mr. Murdoch, this war is not merely about gaining ground. Far from it. It's about bringing the German army to battle where they cannot refuse to fight. And once having engaged them, to wear them down shell by shell and man by man. It will be the side with the greatest fortitude, regardless of losses, with the strongest nerve who will force the decision. And you may assure your Prime Minister that this headquarters will not be the one which lacks the necessary nerve. Bombardment, then. Why should they? They grind us to a pulp with artillery. Hell of a thing to come 12,000 miles for. I think Mr. Murdoch was impressed, sir. Perhaps those colonials will now realize that war on the Western Front is a serious business. Perhaps after this bloodying, their conduct behind the lines will improve. Now, uh, what's the latest from General Goff? Uh, committing another corps at a TF file, General. Come on. Fritz is on the move again. We'll give it one more go before daylight. Now we can rest. Come on, fellas. Stand to. Stand to. Good flags moving behind us as well. Bowie, get a bead on them. Hold it! They're our blades. They're relief. Tell Mr. Armstrong our release arrived. Would you miss your bus? What do you expect? Flags and a ban? What's the situation here? The enemy is 300 yards out front. They're apparently preparing for an attack. And what posted there? There and there. But what's beyond them? It's anyone's guess. Thank you very much. Mr. Armstrong says he's ready to go. Thanks, Paul. Got any SOS players? Yeah. Give us a minute to get clear and fire them. Cheerio. Nine section, move out! See you, mate. Move out quickly. They didn't talk about this at officer training. Wonder if anyone's actually running this battle. Just fire the flares, sir. Just fire the bloody flares. This is a moving occasion for any father. My son is elected to serve his country in the great cause of freedom. Oh, well. We are proud of men like these, volunteering to serve in this great struggle. Is it true, sir, that Prime Minister Hughes is under great pressure from the British General Staff to introduce conscription on account of the enormous casualties they expect? Boys, you know better than to ask a question like that. Is it true? Well, as a confidant of the Prime Minister, I can assure you unequivocally that Mr. Hughes will do what is right for the country. Bearing in mind the wishes of the people of this great democracy of ours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Renshaw. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I have a few unattributable comments to make which may be of interest to you. Oh. Cheer up, Mum. They'll never let me anywhere close enough to the front to muck things up. I'll be a glorified clerk, same as always. I wish your father hadn't forced you into this. 
Has he ever been any different? Anyway, other blokes have gone from the library. I would have had to go sooner or later. You can't let other people make all the sacrifices. I know, dear. It doesn't make it any easier. <coughs> right, boys, let's have a family photo for the afternoon editions. And let me conclude with a message to all the young men of Australia. Great deeds are being performed in France at this very moment. General Haig's great Somme offensive is destroying the army of Germany. Join now and be part of this glory and build a record which will stand you in good stead after the war. Mark my words, the Battle of the Somme will mark the triumphal march to Berlin. Here they come! Irreverent. We have just come from a place so terrible that even a raving lunatic could never imagine the horrors of the last days. Nothing published in the papers about it is worth a damn. There'll be some hair-raising stories to be told when this war's over. I know you asked me to write nothing less than the truth, but I also know that I have your word that none of this will go to my family. The awful question is, was this great effort of our countrymen directed by prudent and competent generalship? Was it worth these crushing casualties? Don't get up, George. It's Comfort's Club working bee again today. I told Robert to pick me up here. He's seeing off a parliamentary colleague. Looks like a letter from France. Anyone I know? No, Thera. I, I don't think you'd know him. Forgive my appalling curiosity. It's just that I haven't heard from Martin for some time, and the last letter I received from him could have been written by a machine. Yes, I am well. Yes, I am all right, etc., etc. Poor George, you look so tired, and here I am prattling on about myself. Any telegrams today? Yes, five dead, five wounded. Dear God, why should the burden of delivering these tragic messages fall upon the clergy? I suppose it was originally proposed so that comfort could accompany the news. It has not worked that way for me. Nowadays, if I so much as walk down the street, women are seen to run away from me in fear. Fear, George. Damn rag. Some fellow civilian, of course, gave it to me at the station. The Australian worker. The whole issue is an attack on the conscription referendum. With our men fighting in France, the thing borders on sedition. Oh, come, Rupert. The labour movement has never made any secret of its views on conscription. The time has passed for the finer points of political debate. They're either for us or against us. Who's us? Those who know that the future of the civilized world depends on winning this war. Oh, that's a little colorful, isn't it? No. This war is in the balance. The federal cabinet have been told by London that if the reinforcement rate is not stepped up, they may have to disband one of our divisions. Perhaps instead, they should think about conserving our soldiers. Spoken like an armchair strategist. Rupert! No. My knowledge of the casualties comes painfully at first hand. Anyway, 
What are we arguing about? The whole question of compulsory enlistment is going to be decided by the Australian people voting in secret, so... It has to be a yes victory. The question is whether the slackers and cowards will continue to avoid their responsibilities. Or whether we should force men to a war 12,000 miles away. Now we see you in your real colours. Why don't you join your friends? The Sinn Feiners, the Catholics and the Socialists. They all want to bring Britain down. Stop it, both of you. You've been friends for too long. This war changes a lot of things including having to decide whether you speak as an Australian or as an imperialist. I'll be waiting in the car, Theo. Take the paper with you, Rupert. It contains an interesting quotation. A man cannot hate to order. Here. Poor Rupert, I, I suppose he sees this business so intensely because Martin is at risk. I am sorry, George. Oh. The bitterness of this war is seeping through the country like a poison. Our young men will not be the only casualties. Bottle, sir. In the papers, there'll be no more volunteers. Conscripts, that's what we'll have next. I don't want to fight with conscripts. Yeah, they can take my place any time. Sure, they go. Corporal Barrington, this just came through. Congratulations, Martin. Donald Crows. It's a Distinguished Conduct Medal. Is that good? Well, apart from Victoria Cross, it's the best there is. On your son. Hey. <laughs> Little reward for what you did at Posy Airs, man. How are you, Marty? So what I got it for, huh? Posy Airs. Congratulations, mate. <laughs> oh. Take a look, Bruce. False alarm, fellas. As you were. Right then. Instructions. <coughs> A fine body of men. Now listen, Barrington. The platoon is going to attend the area concert tonight. It's been decided you're going to enjoy yourselves. <laughs> oh, yeah? Who says so? The Colonel, that's who. Now, you'll parade the platoon at 1900 and march them down to the concert hall. You got it? Mm. Can hardly wait. Enjoyment finishes 21.30 sharp. Now, it's going to be a fine night's entertainment, including novelty acts, recitations, and female impersonations. Ooh! <laughs> well, that's what it says here, anyway. Ah, oh, they told me to come to Europe for culture. Lance Corporal Cleary is pleased. Lance Corporal Cleary? Well, I had to bribe him with something. Anyway, he's been detailed to pick up the stage props. <laughs> Crikey, what do you have to say about that? If I was a sensitive man, I would have blushed. <laughs> but I'm not a sensitive man, am I? <coughs> no. No, no bloody fear, Sarge. He was also told that it was a request from the Assistant Provo Marshal who might otherwise take a personal interest in Cleary's commercial activities. So get the troops there on time. Or else. Or else what? You know. Full of charm, isn't he? Well, go and dig him out, Lance Corporal. Foot sweet. So that's what they mean by chain of command, is it? Mm-hmm. 
Gather around you blokes, bit of news. A sweet yellow tulip, and I wore a big red rose. When you caressed me, it was then heaven blessed me. What a blessing, no one knows. You made me cheery when you called me dearie. It was down where the bluegrass grows. Whiz bangs, eh, Sam? All that bloody drop shorts for me. And I wore that big red rose. Rollers in the grip of the grape. Doing good. Tunic, and you wore your silly clothes. We fought and bled at blows while you were in the booze, booze that no one here knows. Around with the wenches while we were in the trenches, facing an angry foe. Oh, you were a slacking while we were attacking. Up along the boys' years Hello, Sella. <laughs> Have we got an entertainment packed evening for you? Show us your muscles, then. <laughs> Not in front of the ladies. <laughs> but before we start, I have just been handed from Aussie the results of the conscription referendum, and I'm sure you all want to hear them. <laughs> Western Australia, yes. Hey. Victoria, yes. Hey. Queensland, no. Tasmania, yes. <coughs> New South Wales, no. Yay! South Australia, no. Yay! Out of two and a quarter million votes cast, the majority for no is 70,000. Now, what about that? Get him off! You get him off! You get him off! Uh, Mr. B, at this gathering uh, here tonight. Mr. B, there'll be some, uh, some uh, recitation. And who better to recitate at you than your, your old mate Lance Corporal Cleary? <laughs> a bit of Australian poetry. So I'll put the right out on the spec. Yeah. Right. Um, the bastard from the bush. <laughs> I've heard it before, have you? <laughs> As dusk was slowly settling over city, town and bush, this joke had come to see us. He wanted to join the push. <laughs> uh, would, would you let a woman keep you? Would, you? would you give up work for good? Would I let a woman keep me? You get him off. Right, <laughs> Ball team chorus. Get up! What's this? What's this? A bloody soccer show, eh? Yeah, but where's Punchy Elias? He put two blokes in hospital last game. That's the mug. Punchy Ellis, yeah! In the young ugly mug! Punchy Ellis, always ready to shave your legs, mate! <laughs> and he got an ugly mug, eh? And an ass to match! Oh, why can't all cultures be like this? I'll talk to Pat about it. <laughs> 